Welcome to Mount Sinai Live. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm Dr. Jimmy McKay and I'm your host. Today we're talking about alopecia areata. Remember audience, if you have questions or comments during the live stream, feel free to drop them in the comments below, no matter what platform you're watching from. To educate us today about alopecia areata is the System Chair of Dermatology and Immunology at the Icon School of Medicine here at Mount Sinai. She's also the Director of the Laboratory for Inflammatory Skin Diseases. Let's welcome Dr. Emma Gutman to Mount Sinai Live. Dr. Gutman, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Let's dive in. Dr. Gutman, help me understand what alopecia areata is. Yeah, so alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition in which a basically the body attacks itself in a way. There are a, immune lymphocytes called a T lymphocytes, and they are a, around the hair follicle, attacking the hair follicle. And some patients will have one patch of hair loss, but a, many times a, once you have one patch, you may have other patches. And sometimes, unfortunately, it gets to be total scalp or total body hair loss. Okay. Now, how about causes? What are the causes of alopecia areata? Yeah, so alopecia areata is a, it's an immune condition or autoimmune condition. And the cause is it increases in some immune molecules that are increased either in the scalp or if you have more severe forms of alopecia areata, it can also be increased in the circulation. And uh, when you have more severe alopecia areata and you have systemic inflammation, you have to get systemic treatment. You cannot just get injections into the scalp. This will not be enough. Those may be enough for one or two patches. Okay. And alopecia areata, who does it affect? How would you identify who, uh, who it affects? So alopecia areata affects uh, all ages and um, both male and female and all ethnic backgrounds. Um, so it doesn't discriminate. Um, and we have children, adolescents um, and adults and even older adults with alopecia areata. Um, and um, once you have alopecia areata that is more severe, unlikely that you will grow hair without some intervention. If you have one or two patches only, you may have some spontaneous regrowth, but many times once you have a, a one or two patches, it can enlarge as well. A, and you need to seek help to make sure a, that a, it doesn't expand. A, and again, it can extend to total scalp or total body hair loss. All right. If someone is experiencing hair loss, at what yep. point should they contact their doctor? My advice is always to do it early. Um, and, you know, we have many patients that come, they went to the hairdresser, the hairdresser noticed an area, a patch with no hair. I suggest already at that time to uh, uh, seek help. And um, even at that time to go to a specialist. Uh, because um, unless somebody is a specialist, many physicians out there that don't specialize in alopecia areata um, may not know exactly how to treat it. So my suggestion is seek a specialist that specializes in alopecia areata. Okay. And they say we are what we eat, right? So how does yeah. diet affect alopecia areata? What should people know about their diet? That's an excellent question. You know, many times uh, people try to think that uh, certain diseases are caused or linked to diets. This is not true for alopecia areata. And by the way, this is also not true uh, for atopic dermatitis, a disease that is a little bit uh, linked to alopecia areata because patients with allergies and atopy and atopic dermatitis have also more alopecia areata. But uh, I always tell patients with alopecia areata, you can eat everything you want. You should not deprive yourself of food because of alopecia areata because different foods do not cause alopecia areata. Perfect. Excellent. Now, what can you do to live a good life with alopecia areata? You know, people might, might, might be hearing, hearing this diagnosis. Uh, what should you tell them to focus on? 
Yeah, um, so I tell them, first of all, there is hope. We are now at Mount Sinai uh, really focused on uh, uh, finding uh, targets that um, uh, we can use different drugs to treat alopecia areata. We already found um, uh, some targets and now we are moving into clinical trials with these targets and um, uh, more are coming. Uh, so we know now that it is an immune disease. We know some uh, immune cells that are uh, involved in alopecia areata and we are going after them. Uh, however, uh, alopecia areata will not affect your general health. Uh, with that being said, we found that patients with alopecia areata, uh, in their blood, we, we have a systemic inflammation. So even though it appears that only the scalp uh, is involved and they don't have redness anywhere, we found that patients with alopecia areata have more systemic inflammation than patients, for example, with psoriasis or, or eczema that involve a redness. And it is important to treat it systemically because you don't want to have systemic inflammation for a, a long term. It was shown that it can increase cardiovascular diseases and other diseases. So very important to go and treat it. All right. If a parent is out there and realizes they've been diagnosed with alopecia areata, the question comes up, will their child automatically inherit alopecia areata from them? Yeah, no, it's an excellent question. So we do see a more alopecia areata in families of patients that had alopecia areata, but also in families of patients that have eczema. Again, these are linked. It's part of a bag of diseases that are called allergic diseases or atopic diseases. And, um, you know, you cannot do anything um, um, to, to help this genetics. Uh, what you can do is um, when you have alopecia areata, again, treat it early in the game. You don't want to wait too long. Once you notice either in yourself or in your child, that uh, there is alopecia areata, I think the important thing is seek help and seek help by a specialist. Okay. And uh, as someone who treats alopecia areata, you point out that that's not the only type of alopecia areata. There's also scarring alopecia. Talk to us about that for a second. Yes, absolutely. So it's important to understand that there are different types of alopecia. On one hand, you have alopecia areata that is an autoimmune condition that is linked to a T cells or T lymphocytes. And then we have scarring alopecias. And a, a, my lab actually was instrumental in showing that a, scarring alopecias are also treatable and they also involve a, inflammation. And that was not so known. People thought that scarring alopecias only involve a fibrosis and there is nothing to do. However, we showed that scarring alopecia also involved inflammation, a very high levels actually of inflammation in the scalp and a decreasing that inflammation actually can regrow a hair in patients with a scarring alopecias. And we have now a, a really breakthrough study for patients with scarring alopecia in which we see them growing hair. Very exciting. We are the only center that I'm aware of in the United States that has a, a study with a, a JAK3 for a, a several types of scarring alopecias. And a, we are very excited about that a, because it can be a game changer. And scarring alopecias, by the way, are a, a increased in prevalence in a skin of color. And a, we, we really hope to, to bring a breakthrough to a, a to population of patients with a skin of color and not only skin of color with scarring alopecias. All right. So talking about treatments, you, you alluded to that a second ago, but talk to, about to, to treatments um, with al alopecia areata and scarring alopecia. So for um, alopecia areata, there are several uh, treatments that we offer patients. Um, uh, one um, uh, treatment that is being offered in clinical trials are uh, several studies with JAK inhibitors. And we now also have have a study that is a starting soon with another monoclonal antibody that we are offering patients also in clinical trials. We also have done a, a study with a dupilumab or dupixen uh, 
that's a monoclonal antibody, uh, very safe, that targets um, the allergic spectrum of diseases. And uh, we show that it is also effective in alopecia areata in a higher dose than uh, what is approved for eczema. And we now um, are moving forward to larger clinical trials, both in adults and in children um, with alopecia areata, and can also give it to patients that have a, a atopy, eczema, or asthma. We have something very, very specific at Mount Sinai. It's the Alopecia Arietta Center of Excellence. Talk us to us a little bit about that, why, why people in the New York area should, should know about this. Absolutely. So we are super excited to uh, to build a center for alopecia that um, will um, do everything from studies in the lab that are so important. And uh, this is um, our specialty. We have a lab that did, a, 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 I mean, many breakthroughs for uh, eczema uh, came from our lab that a uh, uh, identified new targets for eczema that are now uh, in clinical trials or even approved uh, for eczema. And we aim to do the same in alopecia areata in which we are going to identify uh, new targets that um, uh, will go after in clinical trials. Um, so I think Sinai is unique because we can do both. We can do these discoveries in the lab, and then we have an excellent clinical department and clinical trials that allow us to go after these targets in uh, clinical trials that we are designing. And we actually have some of these clinical trials available for patients with alopecia areata. And I think this is unique. We are a really unique center that bridges the clinic and the lab in one center uh, intended to uh, bring new treatments for patients with alopecia areata, but not only to alopecia areata patients, also to patients with scarring alopecias, both uh, patients uh, uh, that are uh, skin of color patients with several unique scarring alopecias to skin of color, and not only so we are talking about frontal fibrosing alopecia, lichen plano pilaris, and a, a very long name, central cicatricial a centrifugal alopecia that is unique to skin of color. And a, we really are the experts in these. And we now have a clinical trial a, that is designed to help a, these patients as well. Dr. Gutman, thanks so much for stopping by and giving us the insight and sharing us, sharing with everybody why they should pay attention to Mount Sinai specifically if they're in the area and looking for treatments for alopecia areata. Find us at Mount Sinai NYC on all major social platforms. This has been another Mount Sinai live broadcast. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm physical therapist Dr. Jimmy McKay. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much.